are watching America's first and only daily talk show for and about the Filipinos. This is Kababayan LA and my name is Janelle So you're Kababayan in Los Angeles. Like I said earlier, you know, today on the show it's extra special and I'm assuming it's going to be fun as well because we have some of the contestants of the Queen Lola pageant joining us today on the show. You get to meet them. I'm so excited to talk to them as well and that's for later. But for now, in entertainment, we have two filmmakers here. One of them is a Kababayan, of course, uh, Chaz. Hello and welcome to Kababai in LA. Hello. And Steve is very active in the Asian Pacific Islander American community. Hello and welcome to Kababai in Glad LA. Glad to be here. But you're here to talk about Hibaksha. Now, Hibaksha is a film that talks about or tells a story of the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And my first question will be, you know, how is this different? So many movies have been adapted based on this event and so much has been written uh there are books there's everything and even i when i was growing up in the philippines we were taught about this incident in, in you know world history um so how is hibaksha different from those i think it's different because it's a first person point of view of one of the survivors uh and we follow her uh as she you know 40 years later uh 1985 during the anniversary of it she gets uh invited to do an interview on TV when when she actually gets to meet uh, the pilot right. of the Enola Gay who wow. dropped the bomb. How interesting is that? The yeah. survivor meets the pilot yeah. who dropped the bomb. And that's an interesting yeah, angle to it. Yes, so. it's very interesting. I'm assuming it's touching. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. But first, here's a trailer. I say this to all of you, hoping that you carry my message when my time on Earth is past. Rest in peace. This film is for you, for all of you. Wow, first of all, it's animated too. It's yeah. very, very different. Yes, what very made different. you decide to tell, you know, a story as deep and as serious as this in pictures? It was the only way I can really recreate the environment mm -hmm. and the feeling and the emotions just because I wanted to be different and new. And I approached Chaz about two years ago, and I really told him that I love your style. I love the way you just, you know, are able to feel and recreate these environments just off of, like, what I tell you, like, details, colors. Mm -hmm. And he was able to really transcend that into something like what you just saw with the trailer. And, you know, throughout the rest of the film and how it plays out, you really understand, like, you know, how the style really blends with all the colors and the music and even the story it really brings it out even more so when you first see it you're going to really like feel it like hit you in the heart right you know? i think that's what i really wanted to get across i can't wait to see the movie the actual movie it's premiering in september end of september um when when that voiceover says this story is for you why is it for us what's the takeaway well because we tell the story through cause who is a very good friend dear friend of ours um, and this is the way that she would have wanted to explain it for future generations. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, this is sort of like a lost history. Um, you know, it's kind of like it hasn't really been scoped as far back as like you know, the last 20 years. So it, people are making documentaries, but, you know, it, it, to what depth are yeah. they really? Yeah, and really for our doing? generation, I think, uh, you know, seeing it as an animated piece, uh, I think it'll draw their attention more and they'll be able to relate to it right. even better. And Kaz is a survivor yes. of uh, the bombing. Where was she when it happened? She was about a mile away from the epicenter. And what kind of effects? Was she injured? You know, I know that not only do you suffer injuries from right there and then, but also years, effects of nuclear, um, the nuclear effects manifest themselves later in the years, right? Oh, definitely. And it was just not even the fact that they were uh, injured or affected by it, but also ostracized because after that happened, there was a lot of prejudice towards that group. 
um, just because um, you couldn't have kids with them or they were just defective you know people and the Japanese you know from later on they kind of looked at it and they looked down upon them and it was hard especially for Kaz mm -hmm. so you know she had a very difficult upbringing after that bombing you know right. she really had to grow up and really like find her way after that did you have to how old was she when that happened she was around 17 years old around really just starting her life too yeah. Yeah. right mm -hmm. what kind of preparation did you have to go through in order to draw those images for the film uh, I know I did a lot of research uh, you know, just you know, reading books and stuff like, mm -hmm. and interviewing with Kaz, meeting with her, uh, right. just trying to get like a sense of what it was like back then. You know, just you know what she like what any everyday life was, because that's you know essentially what that day was for them. It was just like Normal any other day. day. Yeah, until... there was no you know warning. You yeah. know. Yeah, I want to talk more about that. You know, what it was like at that time, and also years later when she actually met the pilot. That must have been very touching. Uh, we're going to be talking about that a little bit more when we return on the show. Don't go away.